Amen. I think turn, uh, turnarounds get fair play. Amen. <laughs> now I are one. I are a missionary evangelist, <laughs> and I, I am on a mission. I promise you that. Little Johnny walked into the store. He saw a nice juicy red apple on the shelf, and he started doing like this. I think you can probably see that in your mind, can't you? Some of you can remember doing it. Amen. <laughs> but he'd reach like this, and he'd pull back. He'd reach like this, and he'd pull back, and. Uh, the grocery store owner looked at him and said, Johnny, he said, are you trying to steal one of those nice juicy red apples? He said, no, sir. He said, now, Johnny, don't tell me a lie. He said, you've been doing like this. He said, are you trying to steal one of those nice juicy red apples? He said, no, sir. Now, Johnny, he said, I'm going to have to tell your mom on you. Uh, you telling me a story now. Are you trying to steal a nice juicy red apple? He said, no, sir, I'm trying not to steal one. <laughs> And uh, so this week, I, I, I sincerely, w I'm trying not to do anything that would take away at all from this meeting. I want to be a, a, a plus. I want to be a, a contributor. I want to be a, an asset, not a liability. And I want to be used of God this week, just like these other missionaries do. And I appreciate already what I've heard. I appreciate the challenge, Brother Edwards. It certainly spoke to my heart. And uh, I'm going to be preaching this week as God gives me liberty and gives me unction. I can't do it without him, but I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I've got that promise in the book, and you can too, amen. And uh, let's let this meeting be a great meeting. But I want this morning, <clears throat> I want to lay a foundation. I grew up in a carpenter's home, and I know what it is to put in a footer. I know what it is, is to pour concrete. I even know what it is to tie steel, <laughs> And, uh, lay, and put the concrete in, and then put uh, the subfloor in, and, or either put a foundation in, a slab, and then build from that, build upon that. But one thing that my dad insisted upon, he said, when you build a, a house, have a good foundation for your starting point. Dr. Seitler said the same thing. He said he was uh, ridiculed and mocked by many uh, when he was putting in the foundation at the Tabernacle Church, Baptist Church, that... Uh, sat right beside or was positioned right next to White Horse Road, a very busy road, especially when the church was started. And uh, he said people questioned his wisdom in putting such a uh, heavy uh, footer, footer in and, found, and uh, such a strong foundation for the size building they were building. And uh, he said it proved to be such an asset and a blessing uh, after those big trucks were going by uh, and said you never have felt the vibration or or anything from it. And uh, I met, remember him making that statement. Nobody else probably heard it, uh, but I did because I remember my dad saying basically the same thing. And uh, you understand even, even here about the need of having a good foundation. You're in uh, a place, I studied your dilemma in uh, geology many years ago in college, and you're having to do things right now because of a weak foundation and because of a shift uh, underneath. But aren't you glad, aren't you glad as I speak about foundation yeah. that we have a rock? <laughs> we have a rock, a solid rock. So um, that's not my message, but I'm laying a foundation today on why I want to preach messages the rest of the week on uh, the importance of missions and the importance of being involved in what is very dear and close to the heart of God. And uh, I'm going to be giving you this morning a message that I preached at the church that I pastored for 27 years, the Bible Baptist Church. I was there as a little boy when the church was started. Uh, I, was the, I was privileged to be the pastor there uh, for 27 years out of its 55-year history. It's only had three pastors up until the one that I've just recommended, which makes their fourth pastor. They'll soon be approaching in just a matter of a few years, they'll be approaching their 60th year uh, with four pastors. Wouldn't that be a blessing and a good testimony? And uh, I had the honor of uh, preaching the, um, the founding pastor and the second pastor's funeral. And I suppose uh, the 36-year-old man that's pastoring now, uh, if God tears his coming, will, could likely preach my funeral. But I'm not planning on shipping out anytime soon. Uh, I got me an old 1983 Mercedes that I restored, 
because it has a million mile engine. There's one in Stuttgart, Germany that has 3.6 million miles. And before I check out, I want to see if I can put that many miles on that car and beat their record. Amen. And that means I got a lot of preaching to do. I got a lot of places to go. And uh, I'll be going as God gives me the grace and strength. I told you last time, I said, we're part of the same family. So I've come back to see my extended family. And I appreciate that honor. And uh, I have five children, nine grandchildren that I leave behind uh, most of the time. Every once in a while, I'm able to take one of those little rugrats with me. And that's such a blessing. Take my wife with me part of the time. I'm sorry that she's not here now, but I tell you, she can't stay on the road. Uh, I've been on the road 19 months and haven't, I've been preaching every single week to God be the glory. But uh, my wife can't sustain that uh, type of regiment because she has nine grandchildren. <laughs> now you do the math and do the figuring, amen. She has five children. She has to do that motherly thing. So she was with me for two weeks. Now she's praying that I'll wait three weeks before I get her again. <laughs> but you pray for us. It's a different world for us. But I'm living as a soldier now. I'm living as a soldier now. Endure hardness as a good soldier. It's been a good ministry, but it still has its moments when you uh, think about all your familiars and the people uh, that you were surrounded with so many years. I'm not regretting my move. I'm absolutely convinced that this is the move of God, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I preach this message I'm preaching now to the church after I'd been there 25 years. 25 years is a milestone, just like 59 years, <laughs> uh, 50 years in marriage. Uh, 25 years is a milestone in pastoring a church, I felt. And I was kind of, th- had this kind of, a carnal attitude. Well, I've kind of arrived. Maybe I can kind of take it easy now. After all, I fought my battles and I've been in my wars and we've uh, established a, a strong church. And I mean, I was just kind of rocking back and to pat myself on the back, if you know what I mean. Till God said, you better wake up, son. <laughs> you could be like the church at Sardis. He said, Thou hast a name that thou livest, but are dead. Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. He said, For I have not found thy works perfect before thee. And when he said that to me in the, by the word of God, it startled me. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I said, I'll work harder now than I've ever worked. If you'll give me the grace and strength. And I pray that God will renew my strength like the, and get, like the wings of eagles. I can run and not be weary and walk and not be faint if God would see fit. And it seems like God has rejuvenated me for this ministry. And I'm going to give it everything I've got as long as God will let me. It's my honor and privilege to be here. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to preach a message I preached to our church. This is why I'm out here. This is the theme of my ministry borrowed from this portion of Scripture. My prescription that I use comes from this Scripture. And uh, it motivates me. It gets me out of bed every day. It keeps me going into different churches. Uh, uh, this, uh, this past month, I've been, over, you know, I've been over in an automobile. I've been over 7,000 miles just this past month to God be the glory. I, I heard one of the missionaries talking last night saying something about Arizona. i just come back from there. <laughs> i just come back from Prescott, Arizona, preaching a missions conference. And uh, so I'm rejoicing to be in West Virginia. <laughs> I'm a little bit closer to home, amen, still a long ways off. And, uh, and uh, if you had been just a little bit south, you'd been on the same side I was on, amen. <laughs> I think you'll figure that one out, amen. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you don't have to have a PhD to figure that kind of stuff out, amen. <laughs> but we're going to have a good time because we're all family. You hear what I say, amen. Revelation chapter number 3. This is the message that I preached. It's not, it's a, it's a, it has a scary sound to it, but it's exactly taken from the text. It could be preached anywhere. The title of the message is, Wake Up Church, or You May Soon Be Dead. Amen. Wake Up Church, or You May Soon Be Dead. That's the message I preached to our church. It's not that I'm picking on anybody when I say that. It's the Lord speaking to my heart to speak to you. This could preach anywhere. Listen carefully to the words and you'll see what I mean. I hope it brings conviction to us. 
because we must stay alive. We must stay alive if we offer any hope to our children and our grandchildren. We must endure. We must not throw in the towel. Amen. We must keep on keeping on. Amen. The old time preachers used to say you measure greatness by what it takes to stop you. Yeah. Or how can you stop a man who won't quit? Yes. Or if thou faintest in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And if is conditional, they would say, meaning you don't have to faint. You don't have to quit. You don't have to throw in the towel. Right. Are you with me, church? Amen. You don't have to give up. You might give out, but you don't have to give up. You might get knocked down, but you don't have to be knocked out. Amen. And verse uh, 1 and in chapter 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. It's red letter in my Bible, which signifies, and you may have a red letter edition, which signifies that the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking here. He says, I know thy works. When I was reading that several years ago in my own church comfort zone, I was enjoying old time religion right where, right where I sat. <laughs> I was there enjoying the fact that I'd accomplished something that I thought was a, almost an impossible milestone in my own ministry. Certainly when I began, I thought it would never happen, being there 25 years. <laughs> And I thought maybe I didn't earn the right to take it easy because our mission program was strong, our visitation program was strong, our attendance was uh, great. Everything seemed to be so positive, and I was just rejoicing almost in a, in a prideful way. Probably was in rejoicing in a prideful way, and God hates pride, by the way. And uh, God began to convict me, and he says, you, uh, he says, you think, but I know. We think, but God knows. Uh, I know thy works that thou uh, hast a name that thou livest and art dead. I'm sure glad God knows even when we just think we know. I'm glad God, someone knows. Aren't you glad God knows, church? Aren't you glad God knows all that you're going through? Aren't you glad that God knows your uprising and your downfalls? Aren't you glad that God knows when you're comfortable and when you're not comfortable, when you're happy and when you're sad? Aren't you glad that there's a God in the universe, even if the politicians don't know? Aren't you glad that there's a God Almighty that's on the throne that knows? I get passionate about that because I look around and so many of the politicians are doing like this and even the preachers but I'm, and they don't know but I'm glad that God knows. Hallelujah. I don't know who's about to tear this thing apart here but we got to screw it down if I'm going to preach. <laughs> Amen. God knows. Hey, God knows when you're happy. God knows when you're sad but God knows when you're saved and God knows when you're lost. God knows where the lost people are. And we got to go after them. That's what missions is all about. Yes, that's right. Well, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. He says, be watchful. That's a hard message to preach on Sunday morning because some of us are sleepy from staying up all night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> At least it was in the church I pastored. I don't know about you, amen. But I had... Folks that came in about 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't know what they were doing. That's, I guess I had something to preach on and didn't know it, amen. They'd come in about 2 o'clock in the morning and, and they'd be sitting there and be about half asleep. And I was talking to one of the missionaries just then. He said, yeah, I think we had a good time. He said, three of us were asleep and I was one of them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, well, the word be watchful means, it, it means this. It means chase away sleep. Get out of your comfort zone. Be watchful. Chase away sleep. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Does that grip our hearts this morning? For I have not found thy works perfect before God. And that's what God say, spoke to my heart. He says, he says, Alderman, he said, I haven't found your works perfect. He says, you think, and I know. I thought we were doing pretty good, and then God pointed out some things. And I spent the remaining time as the pastor of the Bible Baptist Church using the prescription, strengthen the things, plural, which remains. 